Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to ace the APCSP create task. We're going to go over four examples of functions and program design that you can use on the APCSP create task. I'll show you how to answer the questions related to functions and score full points every time. All right, so let's get going. The first program design is an if inside a loop. This function takes in a list of accessories, puts all of the ones that are Gucci into a separate list, a new list, and returns that new list. This kind of program is a super common design that can satisfy all the requirements that you need for functions. In particular, the design is this. I'm going to create a new empty list. I'm going to loop over each item in an original list, checking each item with an if. If the item is what you were looking for, then put that item into a new list, or else modify it and put it into a new list. This satisfies the requirements because there is a loop, there is an if, and the code that is executed will depend on the values of the input parameters. There are lots of programs that one could write like this. Finding even numbers, finding multiples of two, finding words with certain characters, they all have the same basic design of an if inside a loop. So to score the fourth point on the create task, I'm showing them here, but I'm really just gonna flash the answers kind of quick. Most people tend to answer these questions correctly, and that's why I'm just gonna flash them really quick. But if it's helpful for you, please pause the video and take a closer look. To score the fifth point, I need to describe the function in enough detail that somebody could reproduce it. This is a question that a lot of people miss, and there's a technique that you can follow which will almost guarantee the point. So what you should do is this. You should copy and paste your code into the question area, and then line by line, go through your code and describe what that line of code does. It's going to seem a little bit tedious, but I can almost guarantee that somebody will be able to recreate your code if you describe it line by line, like this. By far, the most common mistake people make is that they assume that the grader can figure it out, and when they write their response, they skip over huge amounts of details. Don't do that. Read the code line by line, describe it line by line, and you will score the point. To score the sixth point, you have to show your function being called, and it has to execute different parts of the code depending on what your input parameters are. A lot of people get confused by this point, so I'm going to show you how it works. Question 3D1 asks about the calls of the function. The important thing here is that you do not necessarily need to call the function twice. You just need to hypothetically, depending on what goes on in your code, have your function run with these arguments. So for my code, I'm going to copy and paste my calls into 3D1. As you can see, I'm going to hard code my arguments. That is, hard code what goes inside the parentheses. I recommend that you hard code your argument like this, so the grader is 100% clear on what your call is. In one call, I'm calling the function with only Gucci items, and in the other call, there are no Gucci items. And then I'm going to describe it. One call has a list where everything is Gucci, and one call has a list where nothing is Gucci. In my opinion, this is the hardest part about 3D. Your calls have to run different code. To show what this looks like, I'm showing what code I run with my first code. As you can see, my call with Gucci runs the if. And as you can see, my call without Gucci runs the else part of the code. So different code is highlighted in these two pictures and that is what you need to have to answer 3D1. For 3D2, I need to say what's tested. In the first case, I'm testing whether the first five letters of the item that I'm on right now are Gucci, and I'm also testing the exact same thing for my second call. For the last question, 3D3, if you've done the first two parts, then this is easy. Just write down what happens as a result of the call. In the case of Gucci, I print out the items, and the function returns a list of Gucci items. In the case of no Gucci, I still print out the items, saying that you should donate them all because they're not Gucci, and then the function returns an empty list. The second example is a shopping program, and we see a lot of shopping programs that get submitted. To satisfy the requirement of executing different parts of code, we use an if-else at the beginning that sends you either along the if path or the else path. So this is kind of the opposite of the first one in that it's a loop inside of an if-else. To score my fourth point, we're again looking at questions 3C1, 2, 3. And here are my answers. Again, I'm going to flash them kind of quickly because most people score this point. But if you want to look at them more closely, please pause the video and take a look. To score the fifth point, I need to describe the function in enough detail that somebody could reproduce it. Again, I'm going to use the same technique that I used last time to score this point. And that is, I'm going to copy and paste my code into the question area. Then, line by line, I'm going to go through this code and describe what this line of code does. This is what I did, and you can see my answer. Again, this might seem like it takes a long time, but if you follow this procedure, 
you will score the point. To score the sixth point, you have to show your function being called, and it has to execute different parts of the code depending on what the input parameters are. So here is my answer. I'm going to both copy and paste my colon and hard code my arguments so that it is super obvious to the grader what is going on. Don't make the grader try to guess what your variables mean. Hard code everything. The grader wants you to score and you want to score. Everyone can win if you make it obvious. In one call, I'm calling the function when my day of week is Sunday. Immediately, it will exit the function as the store is closed and it will return an empty list. If it's not Sunday, then it will run in a loop asking me to buy things until I run out of money. Now, this is probably not what would happen in real life, but that's okay. You probably would not spend all your money at the store, but you don't have to make your program do exactly what people do in real life. It does not need to be realistic. What you do need to make it do is make it so that you can answer the questions of the AP exam because that's how you score your points. So again, you don't have to make it totally realistic. I'll show the highlighted version of each of these calls and what part of the code they are running. As you can hopefully see, when I call the function and it's Sunday, it takes one path to the code. And when it's not Sunday, it takes a different path to the code. For 3D2, I need to say what's tested, and that is whether or not it is Sunday. This is a pretty easy one most of the time. They are the same test for both calls. And for 3D3, if you've done the first two parts, then this one is easy. Just write down what happens as a result of the calls. In this case, if it's Sunday, the program prints the shop is closed and it returns an empty list. If it's not Sunday, the program goes into a loop where it has the user shop, and depending on what gets purchased in that step, it returns the items that were bought. The third program is a grading program. We use an if else at the beginning that sets some sort of scaling factor or scaling parameter, and then we have a for loop inside the code. You could use this kind of design in a shopping program that changes depending on if there's a sale, or maybe a sports program where you might have a factor that determines home field advantage. It's a little bit like the last code, but the loop applies whether or not you have the if or the else. So for the fourth point, we're going to look at 3C1, 3C2, and 3C3C again. I'm going to show them quickly because I think by now you have the hang of this. But if you want to look at them more closely, please pause the video and take a look. To score the fifth point, I need to describe the function in enough detail so that somebody could reproduce it. I'm going to use the same technique that I used before, which is to copy and paste my code into the question area, and then line by line, go through the code and describe what that line of code does. Since I've already done this twice, I'm just going to show you the final result. To score the sixth point, you have to show your function being called and has to execute different parts of the code depending on the values of the input parameter. So for my code, I'm going to copy and paste my calls, which I've done. And in this case, I did not hard code the calls just to show you what it might look like if you don't. But I still think this is clear as to what is being sent into the function. And the most important thing is that I think it's 100% clear to the grader what's going on. Make it obvious to the grader and everybody can win. In one call, I'm calling the function when curve is set to high. So this means I want to curve the scores a lot. The function will set the adjusting factor to 1.2 and then run the rest of the code. And in the other call, I'm calling the function when the curve is set to low. So the function will set the adjusting factor to 1.1 and then run the rest of the code. For 3D2, I need to say what is tested. So for the first call, I'm testing to see if the curve is equal to high. This is basically the if. For the second call, I'm testing to see if the curve is equal to low. This is basically the elif. For 3D3, if you've done the first two parts, then this part is easy. Just write down what happens as a result of the call. This fourth example is a simulation of a best of five. I'm showing this because a lot of people write simulations or they do tournaments as part of their create task. We have a while loop which simulates the best of five. And depending on who wins, this code follows either the if path or the else path. If you set your winning percentage to 100, the player never loses and you only do the if. And if you set the winning percentage to zero, the player always loses and you only do the else. So to score the fourth point, we're going to look at questions 3C1, 3C2, and 3C3. I'm going to show them really quickly. And if you want to look at them more closely, then please pause the video. But I think by now that you can get them. To score the fifth point, I need to describe the function in enough detail so that somebody could reproduce it. So once again, I'm going to use the same technique that I used before, which is this. Copy and paste my code into the question area, and then line by line, go through the code 
and describe what that line of code does. If you do that, you will score the point. To score the sixth point, you have to show your function being called and it has to execute different parts of the code depending on what your input parameters are. So for my code, I'm going to copy and paste my calls. Again, it's better to hard code the calls, copy and paste the calls, and make it obvious to the grader. In one call, I'm calling the function when the player winning percentage is 100. And when the player wins 100% of the time, the code will only run the if parts of the code. In the other call, I'm calling the function when the player's winning percentage is 0%. And when the player wins 0% of the time, the code will only run the else parts of the code. For 3D2, I need to say what's tested. So for the first call, I'm testing that the player won when the player's winning percentage is 100%. For the second call, I'm also testing to see if the player won, but this time the player's win percentage is 0%. I could also mention the if else at the bottom where the player who wins will always have three wins, and that's the if, and the player who loses all the time never has three wins, and that's the else. For 3D3, if you've done the first parts, then this is easy. Just write down what happens as a result of the call. And that's it. Four examples of functions that you can use in your code with different architectures that I commonly see in create tests. We saw a loop with an if inside, an if with a loop inside, an if else at the beginning of the loop, and lastly, how to simulate the best of five that you could easily change to best of three or best of seven. If this video is useful for you, then please give it a like and a subscribe. Thank you.